Good morning, everybody. My name is Bart Winkler. I've got Grant Bills here, or Grant Beals, as Tony in Texas says. It's the Southerner pronunciation, yes. And uh, Paul Emig. You guys know what time it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are streaming this uh, as video as well on the Dan Shaney Insurance Stream. Check out uh, danshaney.com. Shout out to Hot Take Jake, who the other day on the video used the background of Dan Shaney, but like a cutout of Dan Shaney. <laughs> I didn't see that. So, so it looked like Dan was standing behind him. It was, and maybe it was, maybe it was Dan just being, uh, you know, house call. Yeah, maybe it was. I don't know. He didn't move. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -mm. And this is based on my recent appearances on Bill Ryder's show and the great podcast that you're listening to now. Of all the people employed in radio in the country, I am a top 50 knowledgeable NBA man. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -mm. Oh, I see. I see where you're going. Oh, oh, you're asking. Top 50. So who, who would you comfortably put ahead of you? In terms of being let's, able. Let's, let's set like our top 10. Well, oh, in terms of like, I don't, I don't like, okay. I don't, I don't have everybody's skill set in terms of, I know what this guy did. Like. I'm not breaking down defenses. I'm not breaking down drop coverages. I'm not breaking down that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, salaries and stuff, I, I know, but I have to look up. I just feel like, I really feel like in terms of understanding playoff basketball, I feel like I'm a I'm somewhat of a king in that regard. Oh. Well, well top, top 50. How I, I just want to set, I want to get an understanding for how hard it is to be top 50 most knowledgeable NBA you've heard broad. you've heard radio well I, I've heard local radio you're top one in in that department um mm. some you shade got, some shade intended you gotta exclude the people who are like like Zach Lowe is an NBA guy who happens to do TV and happens to do it like that's so that yeah, different. If, they, yeah, if we're counting them right like yeah I mean which, which I wouldn't like Bart is a he's a radio person who happens to talk well, about yeah it. I was thinking like I was if thinking, Bill Ryder says Hey, I don't care who you get to fill in for me. I just need someone who can actually talk about the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Then I got to be like top 10. Yeah. I always think of like Grant. Maybe to top your, one. To, to use the way you framed it, Grant. Like I always think of there's generalists on sports radio mm -hmm. and sports broadcasting. And then there's specialists. Zach Lowe being the specialist on NBA. Uh, Bucky Brooks, the specialist on NFL. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, Bart. For a, I mean, for a quote unquote generalist, yeah, man, you're 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 a stud. You know, I asked that once on Twitter because I was super vain, but I do I, I did I did want to know. I said, "What do you?" It was like, "What do you trust me the most on, or what? What do I talk about that seems the most natural?" Like, you know how like Wildy's a Packer guy, right? You know, Special, kind of, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was. Like 33, 33, 34, NBA, NFL, MLB. Well, MLB should be last. Yeah. But, but I think I think you know that. There, there's a difference between someone who works in Wisconsin media who is really good at baseball and really good at talking brewers. Like, I don't know anything about a lot of other baseball teams, but, like, right. hey, I, I'll talk about the dumbest brewers stuff. Yeah, Grant knows brewers. Grant's top four. Yeah. Top four brewers guy. At least top six or seven. I mean, come on. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be the next guest on Brewers Unfiltered. Or locked on Brewers, although maybe Chuck doesn't he might not do guests. I don't know. He does shorties. Know. He does shorties. He does shorties. Either way, I know that uh, many of you came for today to see what just us three knuckle nuts thought about sports, but we're instead talking about what we think about ourselves. So wait, wait, wait. Well, I, I don't want to leave this yet. What do you think you're best at? What do I think I'm best at? Yeah. NBA playoffs, NBA playoffs specifically. Okay. Yeah, I would have. I would have. Uh, it's a close race at the top, but I I do think of you as an NFL Rogers player. personality. <laughs> Number one, how to be a fan. <clears throat> how to be a fan. Where to put the parade chairs in? In, an, in not only is it not on the correct route, but then they how to get them confiscated. Mm -hmm. So that you're definitely number. Tony Snell cool. playing time probably Tony Snell playing time is a big one. Uh, make uh, coach, sorry, coach, Grant. Coach I know we're Bud not into the meat of this. As Coach Bud impersonators number um, one. No, 
equating Marvel references into sports. Yeah. Um, like my brother week- was listening. I was doing a CBS on Sunday, and my brother was listening, and he there was a Marvel reference within the first three 13 minutes, <laughs> and he said Marvel drink. But my comparison was that the Bucks, and this might be one of your things or whatever, but the Bucks. With Giannis, they were building to Infinity War. I heard this. I it was a great take. They were building to Infinity War. I heard that. everything they did was calculated to get Infinity War, and everything the Bucks did was to get Giannis a championship in Milwaukee. And then and after Infinity War, they're like, "Oh fuck, now what?" And they had like nowhere to go, so they were trying some of the old recipes. They're trying new shit. And she that's home. what the Bucks are now. They got to their destination, but the story needs to continue. They just they never planned on what Wait, was it. Was it Endgame after Infinity Wars? Jesus Christ, it's the same fucking thing. No, but no, it's not, is it? No, Infinity War is, and then it's Endgame. Yes. Okay. I, I meant the I, I meant the Infinity Stones saga coming to a conclusion. <laughs> okay, Marvel Real guy. Ones, no. Hey, Marvel guy, did you hear what James Gunn? director of guardians of the galaxy said about the infinity stones the other day in an interview. Yeah. He said he made it up in 90 minutes. He made it up in 90 minutes and then it became the thing. But they, they, they take all the shit from the comics, Paul. I know that. I know, but anyway, there must've been, there must've been some liberties there. Well, James Gunn is good at what he does. Did you comic book collect as a kid? Either of you? No, I don't like MCU because of the comics. No, no, but like you, you didn't go to the comic book store at age seven, like I did. And no, I went to Fort Farm with my father, and he let me sit on the lawn tractors. That's what I did. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I called, like, a friend and hung out with a friend. At age seven and six? Actually, I went with friends to the comic book store. We were we would always go to Rookies. That was the name of the baseball trading uh, – or JBs on Maine. Anyway, we are brought to you by Happy Place Hemp, which is on College Court in Muskego. You can check them out. I'm going to stop in there. Next week, if anyone's uh, really dissecting my schedule. In the meantime, you can get Happy Place Hemp delivered to your home in discreet packages, which, I mean, you can, I mean, a lot of people are proud that they're getting the gummies to their house, but that also means your neighbors are going to be like, eat or steal. And then if you're postman, shit, I don't know how much we can trust postmen. Post if, if, if I'm a postman and I see, or a post person, and nice. I see Happy Place Hemp, I'm pocketing at least one of them containers. So discreet packaging, 25% off every order with the promo code BART, happyplacehemp.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, coming up next. Welcome back. Paul, take it away. All right. I want to start with Bucks. I know we did quite a bit of Bucks last week. It was just a day before Mike Budenholzer was fired. It was before your friend Brian Windhorst went on the speculation train. Which nobody else picked up. Yeah. Which means uh, he was full of shit. But it was yeah. before it was before the train was set in motion for a certain direction of the offseason. Um so I want to start like big pictures because the most important thing for the Bucks is very obviously Giannis. And this isn't gonna be about the fact that he has two years left or Windhorst's comments or any of that, but I went back and I looked. Giannis in the when we were in the NBA in 2022 did the top 75 NBA players of all time, right? Do you recall this? Mm-hmm. Giannis um in the I have these both up in the athletics version, Giannis was 24. Mm, in the yeah. ESPN version, he was 18. So after one championship and only 10 years, nine years, 10 years in the league, he was already the 18th to 24th best player ever right so i think we need to start talking about legacy like i know legacy came up a little bit um before the playoff run this was a hit to his legacy like i'm not even gonna mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that this was a hit to his legacy because okay grant i mean okay okay you know what grant's giving me a facial expression that tells me i do need to ask it this playoff debacle was a hit to Giannis's legacy this was an unintended we'll we'll use this as our starter kit Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. I'll I'll be quick. <clears throat> I think it was a hit to his legacy. I think it I think it stopped his legacy from progressing. Like I said this on my show this week a couple times. I don't think legacies can go backwards unless really? all oh, the I... in. If you steal oh. money from the poor, 
they can your legacy can make. No, it. no, no. I always said that Eli Manning almost played his way out of the Hall of Fame. Okay, I, Grant. I, Grant, I do think. I, for example, like when you're 18th or the 24th best player of all time, you are in mm-hmm. unbelievably rare air. Mm-hmm. I definitely think you can lose some spots if, like, if this happens two more times in the next three years, yeah. when you're out in the first round of five games. I think he can. I think he can definitely drop on the all-time players list, which means his legacy would be in that theoretical taking a hit. And and it would happen because other players like like Mahomes overtook Rodgers or is going to overtake mm-hmm. Rodgers. I don't yeah. think Rodgers' legacy ever went backwards. The problem was when Rodgers won his first Super Bowl, we thought, mm-hmm. oh, he will go here. He sure. will accomplish this, and the team will do this. <clears throat> he just never got there, so his legacy stayed in the same spot and never grew to where we wanted it to at least yeah. from a postseason perspective i think the same is the same with Giannis. he won that first title and we're like oh my god right if he wins this and does that he's gonna end up here i don't think he's moved backwards from where he was after that title i just don't think he took another leap which means in some regard like if Jokic or Embiid wins a title this year yeah not that they'll overtake him but that's that's how Giannis would move backwards as other players would would move past or any thoughts mm-hmm, or mm, that this was a hit to Giannis's legacy at least in the short term in the interim while we wait to see what's the next chapter well he needs to back up what he said after the game uh, about oh, failure and stepping stones and and everything else if Giannis is to retire tonight then it is a hit to his legacy so he needs to go and show uh what what and th- this is you know we've talked about this but those failures were failures, but they were they became part of the success once they succeeded. So if Giannis goes and succeeds again, wins the title, then we can look at this and say that was you know part of it. Still, this was always a failure. I mean, this was ultimately a failure. Um, I think that I think I fuck. I think I'm, do it. Say it. I don't like talking about Giannis's legacy at this point of his career. And I'm not saying that that's fair or unfair. I probably should be. We all do talk about everybody. And I've talked about other people's legacies every fucking day. <laughs> but I don't want to do it yet with Giannis. I... No, it's, it's, it, this is, it's time to talk. I mean, you, this has to be part of the consideration set. Well, then it hurt. This playoff run hurt. I agree. So and I think for me, um, I, I was using that as an assumption, but then we kind of got into it, which is, which well, is fair. Also like one thing that I think needs to be talked about more is the Bucks Supreme. And we all, we all felt overconfident. Like, you know, Ty Windish would say, talk your shit. Yeah. A, a lot of us, I still think it's hilarious that anyone um, would to use Freem's phrase, come at me on Twitter and be like, how can we trust you? You thought the Bucks would beat the heat easily. Everyone did. I mean, I think the fucking earth is going to spin on its axis tonight. That's just, <laughs> that's just what was going to happen. Right, and right. then it didn't. Right. So if I say, I guarantee there's a sunrise tomorrow and then there's fucking not like, that doesn't mean I was an idiot for thinking that mm-hmm. that's how, that's how like much of a locked it seemed. But I thought the box biggest up, biggest upset in NBA playoff history. Oh, Bart, well, you know, technically Bart. the heat should have been a seven seed. Whatever, but but Bart, 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 let me just say, the Bart, Bart. Bucks should have played Giannis in Game Three, but they were overconfident. Man. I want to say I heard your discussion with Sparky on the podcast, and I appreciated that you didn't let Bud off the hook. Not that Sparky was like overly letting him off the hook, but you really didn't, and I appreciated that you kind of came back hard with that. That's right. You said that. What did you say that if you're it's not funny, but you were like, if my brother died tomorrow. I talked to them. I, I, all I'm saying is on behalf of me. Yeah. If I'm me and I'm the head coach of an NBA team and my brother died, I wouldn't forget how to make substitutions. I'm saying that on I my think. behalf. Yeah. Okay. And You're he agreed. Different. Now, if my wife or son died, I'm sorry to my brothers who I love. But that's a little closer to home, literally. Right? Yes, yes. It's in the like, home. Like, if if my son, I don't even want to talk. I don't even want to say that. What the fuck are you making me do? I'm not but, saying shit. You're, no, you're, dumb you're shit here is like. Brothers. Hey, uh, Paul's Paul's like, hey, that thing you were uncomfortable saying, kind of say it again, and then I, triple down on it. You didn't seem uncomfortable saying it. Well, now I'm talking about worse shit. Well, that's on you, bro. 
(laughs) But I just like, if I croak as we're taping this, my brother is still showing up for game five of Warriors Lakers. Would you like Paul and I to finish the episode if you (laughs) keel over on the stream yard? Oh, I had a new pain last night. It was uh, my leg just started throttling as if people were on the inside of it, clamping my muscles. That's a cramp. Isn't no, it? it never, this did not feel like a cramp. This felt like people taking like tools, like little like. That's, All right, I have, I have to ask you a question now. That seems like it might be a cramp. The, I'm amazed at the number of people who don't do like annual physicals and annual blood work. Am I talking, am I talking to two people who do or don't? Oh, God, no. You couldn't get me to do that. Hell no. No, remember I got in a fight with Rami because he was mad at me because my cholesterol was good. And he's like, your cholesterol's good? I remember that. I do, too. So so I went, I, yeah, I get checked. Cause, and I told him, run everything. Yes. I need to know everything. Uh, and I came back. I came back a little less healthy than the last year. But okay. for my lifestyle, I was very satisfied with my my uh, body so you do it every year though the blood results and all that or yeah more. i mean maybe uh maybe like every year in four months but sure yeah yeah good good i for try you, to man. make sure Grand- i try to make sure i do a physical yes now do i go to the dentist you didn't ask me that question so i'm not gonna answer okay <laughs> well i'm gonna ask the dentist one next have Wait, you taken like- your kids to a dentist yeah yeah i haven't taken mine to a dentist they've yet. been like three times now yeah, my thinking is he's gonna lose these teeth anyway. Am I stupid? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should you should be doing it. Okay. I have a good recommendation for you. This is a cool place that is kind of right in the middle of me and you. So, uh, will you send that honestly? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I need a dentist. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, so my second question then, Bart, because uh, my dentist name is Crentist. Crentist. <laughs> he's a new dentist. <laughs> he's far. Bart, how he's often? A new Lyra. Any- how many times have you been to the dentist in the past 10 years, Bart? Um, I was going pretty regularly in the first six or seven of those 10 years. Okay. And then the place got torn down and turned into a bank. That that hurts your dentistry abilities to, yep, I get that. And then they also, they were also like, all right, the next time you come in, we have to do a, a procedure on you and it's going to be expensive. And I was like, hm, I guess there's no next time then, is there? <laughs> Wait, wait, and then they became a bank after that? Yeah, and then the place met. Like, this place, this place, okay, fucking dentist. <laughs> Have you ever, like, all these dentists. I'm so glad we're into this right now. Well, seriously, every dentist I've ever known just goes, like, to the hot chick farm and hires the 10 hottest chicks to fucking do their teeth. You mean there's, like, the uh, the dental hygienists or whatever they're called? Yeah. Like, were these were these women into dentistry first and just happened to be attractive, or did he find attractive women and then made them be dentists? Or... Sent sent them to dental school <laughs> on his own dime. <laughs> it's like, and then and then they like disappear one day, and I'm I'm thinking, did this place ever really exist? But that was when I was at the dentist, uh, the time that I called Florio a hack. Yeah. And then I went into the office, came back out, checked my phone, and I had Wildy Army after me. Mm, oh, I remember this. Because Wildy thought I called him a hack. I remember this. And then he's asking Freems and Gary and all these people, what's up with this Bart guy? What's up with this Bart guy? I called Florio a hack and you made it, you thought it was you. I I know exactly where I was when you sent me some of those. Like, I can, it must be a moment in time in my brain, a bookmark of like, uh, yeah, that that day for you. I remember I where I was. was that hard, what Grant? Well, I remember where I was when Rami gave you shit about cholesterol. I was in my kitchen, my house by Snuffy's in Lacrosse. I remember exactly where I was. So I'm with you, Paul. The moral to this story: do your annual blood work and go to the dentist. Hmm. Now, don't don't shake your head, no, Grant. No, you should be doing this. Okay, okay so, so this guy who is always I found the tweet March eight, twenty seventeen. So I did go to the dentist last day. Um, so the last said, time there was the last time you were the dentist was March 8th, 2017. No, I went a couple other times. Okay. <clears throat> um, I said, leaning on not bringing up Roger's story on show tomorrow, 
So I, the, you want to, you say, what is Bart starting hating Rogers? 20, Bart March 8th, 2017. 2017. <laughs> if we do, I will avoid sourcing where it came from because I'm that way. Uh, Wiss Hogg, some guy who's always fucking hated me and then pretended to like me for a while and then hated me again. He said, not pretending or not bringing up a pretty big story is a disservice. And I said, same listeners begging us not to talk Packers are going to want us to talk about an interview from another station. Field by hack writer pass. So Wilde interviewed Rogers. Mm -hmm. The conversation was fueled by Florio. So then Greg Beyer says hack writer looks like someone has their jealous pants on today. I'm going to retweet. I'm going to respond to that tweet. (laughs) Six years later. Just wanted to clarify, Greg. That I was talking about Mike Florio being a hack. I have nothing but respect for Jason J. Wildy. Did you guys see my wink? I did. I'm not engaging, but yes. yes. Um, but I'm not winking on the tweet. Okay. And I have not yet forgiven you (laughs) for trying to drive a wedge in between the two of us strangers a relationship that never materialized because of you Greg just wanted to clarify Greg that I was talking about Mike Florio being a hack. I have nothing but respect for Jason J. Wildy, and I have not yet forgiven you for trying to drive a wedge in between the two of us strangers, a relationship that never materialized because of you, comma, Greg. He's going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're going all you know, on this guy. You got to like put a parenthesis, like, hey, listen to tomorrow's podcast if you want no. the context for why. Uh-uh. I'm- no context. No context. There don't need to be because I'm still pissed about that fucking shit six months later. Years. <laughs> so naturally, this was a we were talking about Giannis's legacy. I mean, there's how could you not have gotten to this point of the discussion? six years later? I respond to this fuck. <laughs> Being of legacy. The question is, how many of the three people in your response just now, Florio, Wildy, and this Greg guy, have you blocked? And we'll even see this tweet. No, Wildy doesn't. Okay. I, I still think Wildy, I'm following Wildy. You guys, it's the same with you and Negler. You 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 would like each other, I think. Like you 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 were along the I same think Wildy, way. of all these guys for infrastructure week, I think he'd be the most. Although I did watch a podcast with him and Homer and Tom Pippins. They do like some Jesus podcast or Pippins does, and they were on it. And Wildy was like, I, my, my biggest sin is I have a hard time forgiving people. Oh. But in this case, there's nothing to forgive because. He, he, yeah, he, he needs to forgive Greg for being such a jackass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Giannis's legacy. Fucking Greg. Oh. Uh, moving from the, in the initial unplanned. Mm-hmm. Here's my question for you. Giannis needs at least one more championship title to be in that, to, to basically to move any higher in the all time list. He's going to need at least one more championship title to maybe even just keep his position on the 18th, 24th best player of all time, but certainly to move up into that conversation of modern day great NBA players, Curry, LeBron. If Giannis is going to, become in that echelon and by the way curry was only like 15 on those lists so like Giannis was not far behind that one title versus how many does steph have four is that right well, that was he before was... steph would have won his fourth right i guess he would have already had three yeah. or whatever so i mean it's still a lot um anyway uh Giannis needs at least at least one more championship to cement his legacy as a modern day all-time great nba player a modern day maharaja sure Jinder Mahal. I remember. He's back. Is he really? Giannis needs one more championship? Yes. For his, and from, from a legacy perspective, to be like of this era, you know how like people wanted to vote for Embiid because, well, the last five years, it should be Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid. Grant, you want to take that one? Because I have a very specific answer. Uh, I don't have a very specific answer. I think if Giannis plays his whole career in Milwaukee like Dirk did, 
uh, and has more playoff runs and, and makes another finals and, and has great playoff moments. I don't think he needs a second ring to climb significantly higher. I, I, I think, yeah, he would need a second ring, but if he leaves to go somewhere else to do it, right. Then, then that kind of changes the calculus too, because the, I think the title like Dirk and Dallas, it's weighted a little bit more for Giannis winning in Milwaukee, the same way that we value LeBron's title in Cleveland, most of all. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I think there's levels to how and where and when you win those titles as well. But yeah, in order for him to take another step, you'd have to win a second title. Cause what if Embiid or, or Jokic wins one now that's right. kind of a crowded group, a crowded tier. Mm-hmm. Wink. Ooh, um, we're recording this Jordan lives. Talk, Jordan loves talking today. Do I need to Ooh. do an amendment? No, but that makes my show tonight a lot easier. 1230. I just want to say you, Grant, you probably get cuts. about your comment, Grant. Like I'm, I'm going to quick look for Dirk on these lists. Where would you think, uh, where would you think Dirk is on this list? Not where Giannis is. 15. He... Uh, so this is the athletics top 75 all time from February of 22. 15, Steph Curry. 16, Cara Malone. 17, Kevin Garnett. Eight, uh, 18, Moses Malone. 19, Julius Irving. 20, David Robinson. Dirk, 21. Giannis at 24. So obviously Dirk had 10 more years than yeah. the NBA than what Giannis currently has. Barkley, 22. Ringless, Barkley at 22. Elgin Baylor, 23. Um, so, I mean, just context in terms of, like, who's just above him. I mean, and surpassing Steph Curry, who's currently 15th, or maybe he's higher now because he's won a title since this list, that's, like, almost impossible probably to catch. Like, that's, there's a big gap probably between, like, Giannis's current number 24 spot and Curry's 15 because you're not going to catch. I, mean, well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe you can. It seems unlikely. Like, hey, four titles. Like, that's such a huge almost impossible achievement. Uh, it's, Bart, you had it's, a very specific answer to this question, but Giannis's legacy needing at least one more title to be cemented in modern day, all time, great player conversation. <clears throat> what? So what's your very specific story? Well, I thought Grant just asked me a question. Well, no, I'm just looking at, I don't know that I agree with the Dirk stuff. I mean, Giannis is on Giannis has, he's got the first team all NBAs. He's got an extra MVP. I, I guess I don't know why. I'd have to look into it. I have to read about it. Because he's one, won, he's he won one title with one team. But Giannis has done team. the same thing, and Giannis yeah, is going so Giannis is going to be compared to Dirk. Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know why why Dirk would be listed above Giannis right now. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. Well, that, that doesn't matter. One thing I want to say <laughs> before I answer the question is um, someday I will be vindicated, as I am with every take. Uh, there's been a lot of takes where I have been vindicated. Uh, people are gonna Nikola Jokic is faking. He is a piece of shit. And someday people will realize this. I do not like the guy. Uh just put that out there. I have no facts other than my like, feelings. Like, like player or like like Draymond Green kick people in the junk POS. Uh I just don't like him because okay. of how he acted one time in an interview. And okay. nobody else saw that except for me and two other uh, guys from the athletic. Just real quick on the ESPN list where Giannis is 18th. 16 is Curry, 17 is Dirk. Is so both right? lists, Dirk is you know, one. Uh, ESPN is- also put a horse as their 38th greatest athlete of the 20th century. I thought, so we already, I I thought you already covered off on your horse takes. You have more of them? <clears throat> no, I want to hear what uh, Greg has not responded yet. I think that from give, a national. Give him, give him six years. He's got six years to respond. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 2029. <clears throat> from a national standpoint, mm-hmm. Giannis winning one championship is great it is oh yeah from a national standpoint maybe from a local standpoint he'll always be a legend no 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 no. from a national standpoint because in like dirk nobody who shits on dirk for only winning one anyone has anyone ever shit on dirk for only winning one you know what fair point i don't think i've heard any slander for Dirk. chris paul's never won one charles barkley never won one well Bar- barkley that's a it's constantly mentioned about barkley it, it but that's because be- he's on tv and the guys shit on him all the time but chris paul will be a very public figure post-retirement and if he doesn't win a ring he'll get shit but it's not gonna, like chris paul i was talking about this coming into the playoffs another great take of mine is who needs a title more and i don't think like chris paul's legacy is going to be defined if he wins another championship. Yeah. He's Chris, Chris Paul's legacy is already set. It would be like, yeah. it's a cherry on top. And he won a championship or he didn't. Right. Like this I isn't think- a John Elway situation where he wins two and all of a sudden, you know. 
if, he, if he wins one at this point, he's not going to be the driving focus like he would have been. In New yeah, Orleans. it doesn't. Uh, it's it, a different I mean, type it, of ring. All, all that it does is us say he never won a title. Right. Yeah, Chris Paul winning a title would just be the cherry on top of the resume. Yeah, I agree with that. A nice moment on his on his on his way out the door of mm-hmm. the NBA. But locally, we're obsessed, and I've been a big person to complain that Aaron Rodgers only won one. Mm-hmm. And so we're gonna get the same because we still and I don't even know why I bring it up. I don't even know why I try to fight against it. I don't even know why it's even something that comes out of my chest into the atmosphere. We just, we think everything is Packers. We, we will never break it. We will never break it. We think everything is Packers. We think everything is NFL. Uh, we're going to view it that in that prism forever. That's why we overvalue Bucks regular season wins and losses. Um, you know, Giannis winning one title is not the same as Rogers winning one title. They are different. If you disagree with that, uh, I don't, I mean, they're different. They're different. Tell me more they, though. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I disagree or not. I'm, why are they different? I'm still not sure I'm following you. I, the, the sport, the makeup of the sport, the, 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 they're just not, they're just different. The runway, the runway for contention in the vast majority of cases with contending teams and players is shorter in the NBA. Right. No, like, and I, I get the, the counter argument is, well, Giannis has more impact over his team than. Sure. Just so, so in, though. so in the, the smaller sample of, of opportunities to win a title, Giannis has more of an opportunity to make an impact than. But then I also think like, Rogers. Oh, Rogers was let down. Rogers is a better quarterback than just winning one. He was let down by his defense. You're telling me Giannis wasn't let down by executing perfect passes to Nikola Miritich. who can't make a fucking shot. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you tell me he's not let down by bad coaching. <clears throat> I just, I just feel like, so that's now we're getting into a, just let me go back to the original. And this is what I want to be judged on by people yeah. that uh, hang on my every word. Giannis winning one title is acceptable on a national level. Locally, it will not be because we're saying if it wasn't for Rogers, then it shouldn't be for Giannis. But then again, I, and this is a eureka moment I had recently, and I've talked about this. Does anyone ever say Brett Favre only won one title? Not one single fucking person ever, and he went to a Super Bowl and lost. But say, I think going back to the Super Bowl, though, is an important point there, though. He at least went back. They were 14-point favorites, and they Irrelevant. lost. It, this, that was 26 years ago, so all we look at now is Favre won one and went to another one. Well, the Not 2014 just... NFC Championship game. <clears throat> I think... If the 2014 NFC Championship game was a Super Bowl, if that happened in the Super Bowl, it'd be better. Well, of course it would. It would yeah. have it would have cemented more legacy because for getting is getting to a Super Bowl more important than no. Is no. not getting to a Super Bowl a harder pill to is losing an NFC Championship game worse than losing a Super Bowl? I no. think we think the answer is yes. No, you'd rather lose an I mean, historical. We're talking, this is a legacy conversation. Legacy conversation, you'd much, 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 much rather lose in the championship, the Super Bowl, the NBA not, finals. Not Jordan. Not not Jordan people. That's all they have to cling to these days. Well, fine. Generally speaking, like, like we just were talking Favre versus Rodgers. Favre won one and went to another one. Rodgers has won one and question mark, which is a big deal, I think. Like Andy Reid went to how many NFC championship games with the Eagles, but like could never get over the hump. Like, mm-hmm. so that was his legacy up until the Chiefs situation that, of course, he more than went over the hump with it. Um, you know, Bart, I, I'm going to push back on a couple of things. I know last week you had said we agree on 95% of sports topics. Yeah, what I meant was disagree. Yeah, it's becoming, I feel like we're getting farther from 95%. I, I think at a national level, Giannis winning one is not, I, I, to me, it feels would be unacceptable. It would always be held against him as, unless, let me just say, unless he goes to two more finals and loses them. Like, he has to at least go back one or two more times, I think, for the national conversation. But the jerk? I, um... Oh. No. Don't, Look, I, where, hold on, hold on, why hold on. is dirt? so why does Dirk get... You're ta- why is Dirk going to get passes that Giannis doesn't? That's okay, let me. Okay, here's here's my. This would be my answer to that. 
when when Giannis was twenty, was he twenty six when they won the title? Twenty seven, I think twenty six. Okay, and Dirk was like a hundred. But also, I think Giannis is viewed as having the potential of being a top five all time player. All right, fair. I don't think Dirk was ever viewed as like, hey, this could be one of the five best players of all time. The fifth, top fifteen, top twenty, like as both lists have proven, like Dirk is that. But that was probably like by most people's account viewed as Dirk's ceiling as being a top 15 to 20 Giannis's ceiling was, and arguably maybe still is the potential of being top five. So it's almost like Dirk hit the 99th percentile of his possible best outcomes. And if Giannis sits at this current level of one championship, never getting back to one with again, he's got 10 years still to play. So it's very premature, but then I think he would be viewed as underachieving. Dirk would have maximized his, his, his possibilities. And I think Giannis would have fallen short Maybe expectations are unfair. Maybe I'm wrong in, in the way I view that. But I, I do think that's the difference is Giannis having the potential to be Jordan LeBron, whereas Dirk was always a step behind Jordan LeBron. But if Dirk would have gone to play for the Lakers or the Knicks, or he would have teamed up with someone, like I think there is a certain amount of like legacy insurance you get when you stay in the city where you're drafted and you sure. ride the lows out with your team. I, like, I think we're seeing that with, with Spolster right now as a coach. Like, he's he is coaching the lesser talented team, not as much as expected of him. And I think for that reason, over the last five or six years, we're often, like, blown away with Spolster. He's doing less with more. I think you get a lot of credit for that. And I think oh. Dirk, the player side of that coin, like, he gets he gets that credit. And if Giannis sticks around, I think he'll be given kind of that same benefit. Well, and down. that's why I disagree with Bart's other point about, like, Giannis on the national stage versus local. I think Giannis's local legacy – is forever untouchable. He could never go to another championship and he will forever be. I don't know. Elevated. I don't know. I, and also, by the way, if he plays his whole career here, except for maybe like a twilight season somewhere else, but especially if he plays like the whole career here, he will forever. There will never, a, a buck will never pass. I mean, his Bud legacy. got fired 18 months after he won a title. People turned on him. Bud is an average at best NBA head coach. Giannis is one of the top 18 to 24 best players of all time in his mid to late 20s. These are not comparable people in their profession of coaching versus playing. Um, Man, I I think we just, we might just be on a different wavelength there. Um, Yeah. I think I would say this about Dirk too. Like, I think, like, when you compare, like, how Kevin Durant, LeBron, playing for multiple teams, trying to go where the talent is or joining with other talent, I think Dirk somewhat gets a pass because he didn't do that. And if Giannis doesn't do that, could maybe, in the retrospective, like we're doing with Dirk, after his career is over, we might think of that similarly. But I think part of the challenge with that is you could also say, and I heard Sparky complain about this with you on your podcast, part that Giannis needs to be the one to raise his hand and say, no, I'm taking Jimmy Butler. On that same competitive, and I put air quotes, like and on that same level of competitiveness, if Giannis thinks he can't, let's say the Bucks retool. Let's say Drew is trading. Retool or rebuild or reload, yeah, or, reload or refocus. Play, Stop, we're not going to play decide. the synonyms game, but like. But by the way, what are we doing with that? It, what, right. the fuck? They're, they're filling time, filling time. But uh, let me, so, I think, oh, oh, hold on. This is an important point. I, if the Bucks retool and they. We'll talk about this in a little bit. Like, let's say they trade Drew for some young players and Middleton for some young players and whatever the case might be. If Giannis is like cool with that, right? And he's like, yeah, like I know we're not winning a championship. That could be a bad thing, right? Well, game. It, it, well if he was, if like, I'm just going to play the devil's advocate. Well, if Giannis was competitive, just like how it's like, well, Giannis was competitive. He would have told Bud, no, I'm taking Jimmy Butler. If yeah. Giannis was competitive, and by the way, this is not my perspective. I'm playing the other side of the fence. It's like, well, like I said, PJ if Tucker Giannis was competitive, he would have done what Durant did, which is, I'm not wasting a fucking season in Brooklyn with these scrubs, like, like, or whatever, or or wherever he would be, and when he changed teams. Well, yeah. if he was competitive, he would have wanted to go to a contending team. So that's why I think locally he is cemented, and nationally it's still like going to be up for debate about how much higher, if at all, higher he can climb on these lists. Sorry, I want to make sure I got that point out. You guys go. Wink. Uh oh, don't do that. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, fuck don't call me that. Uh, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. On mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I will talk about right after these words. Um, as we are woefully. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
I do want to remind you about Omaha Steaks. The promo code is BART. 25, 20, 20, how much is it? $20 off the orders of 129 or more, the packages. And I got the Father's Day packages coming up. So stay tuned for that. I keep being like, hey, how are the sales going? And they're like, here's your new copy. So I'm not sure. Uh, OmahaStakes.com. We'll be right back after these words. We're back! Can you even believe it? Barely. We are back. I can't. Here's something that people keep asking me. Mm -hmm or mm -mm. You are worried about Jimmy Haslam's influence on the Bucks going forward. Because what I told Sparky, Sparky wants Becky Hammond because... And I said, by the way, I was very, what, 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 what? It's just when he said, well, the, don't count her out. Cause they hired Lisa Byington. I wanted to jump out my apartment window. But do you I, like my take that if the bucks, the bucks want, they're, they're in the offices thinking, how do we get the first woman player in the NBA? Maybe, but Lisa, but, now, Jim, but then people are like, Bart, I heard that. And Jimmy Haslam's a Republican, which I, I'm not saying that that means he doesn't think women are equal. That's what you said. By the way, Biden's poll number is way down, even though Trump's sexually harassing people and getting nailed for it. I just don't think the hiring of Lisa Byington has anything to do with the price of eggs in Egypt, as they say. Like, those are not connected. But I guess props to Sparky for going for it with his take. I was uh, glad you, I, I thought I was, I was fascinated by your rebuttal to that point, Bart. With the WNBA team? Uh, no. I'll, no. What did I say? Well, just uh, you I don't remember what I you guys I don't remember what I say. I don't remember I just what I, listened to it in the last hour. I don't remember what, maybe don't go know. back and add it right here into the if you want to like do some editing, add the clip in. No, just fucking tell me. I I would be I would be loosely paraphrasing. I don't want to do that to you. Just do it, then I'll remember. All this is you you countered the idea anyway. What I saw and have read. Oh, that the idea that they would play five women out there if they could. Oh, was that was that? That's what's what. Yeah, I mean, honestly, try all I remember was I that. Just said that. Yeah, you, you did say that. Um, anyway, anyway, what I what I'm asking you are the Bucks more or less likely mm -hmm. to roster Juana Man now that Jimmy Haslam is an owner? So uh, your, your original question was, uh, are you worried about the? You don't know that, Grant? What's up? Do you know Juana Man? Oh, I, I thought I thought you said to want a man is no to want a man. The movie. No, I don't know who that is. You to want a man is a movie, movie. <laughs> that <laughs> will not get made today. Um, it's a guy who fails in the NBA, so he pretends to be a woman so he can play in the WNBA. Oh, so it's like The Ringer, kind of. Well, like yeah, that. I suppose. But okay, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think what I was saying is I think Jimmy Haslam bought in and fuck, he's 65 years old. James Haslam bought in. <laughs> Thank you. To, to, uh, <laughs> he, he, he bought in to win a title and then they backfired. I think he's just in this for an investment and someone else can do the work. He can win a title. Jimmy yeah. Haslam, James Haslam, Jim Haslam is not in the day-to-day -day operations of what the Bucks are doing. I just no think, matter no matter what sky Paul Henning wants to think is falling. I the the Jimmy Haslam takes do not interest me. The continued takes about Giannis's post game presser after they lost the Heat do not interest me. I, I just it's 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 Wisconsin sports fandom. We we want to convince ourselves to care about these things that just don't matter. It's the fucking long snapper every year. So like, we got a long snapper, or you had punter gate which I know is sarcastic, but you know that people in the state eat stuff like that up. It's like, we got to talk about Jack Coco. And if, and if he's going to be able to snap the ball, we got to talk about Jimmy has James Haslam or, you know, my YouTube with Ryan Wood from mm -hmm. earlier this week is my third most watched interview already behind only Clay Thompson and uh, Cody Rhodes. And we're talking Packers in the off season. Just go Packers all the time. Why, why am I talking bucks as much as I do? I don't know. I, this is I, what happens. This is what happens to Congress people. I have good intentions to talk bucks. And then I realize that the only way to make money around here is to talk Packers and Congress people have good intentions to change the world. And then all these people are like, Hey, but if you like 
don't vote for this, we'll give you $9 million. And also you get to control the laws that uh, affect the stock market. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I just stepped back into, but sorry for disappearing for a few minutes. You're all good. Um, You're all good. Can I move on to my next box one? I'd love you to. My Unless next you have any comments about James Haslam. Yeah, I, I don't know where I would have gone with that. Um, I, I'm not worried that his impact will like be. I mean, no. And, by the, way, he, and by the way, he's not going to be the governor of the team for a while, right? No. Well, I think he was the governor this year because then he could have held the trophy. Now I think it goes back to Edens. Oh, okay. Um, what what gas station does he own again? Loves Pilot. Pilot. Pilot J. Pilot J. J's. It's not pertinent. I just I, I just can remember. Yeah. Continue. Oh, also Sorry. once again, people that fetish over gas stations are fucking losers. All right, I have one more Giannis one for you. Um. Kind of on the tail of what we were talking about. I'm I'm curious what your reaction will be even to the topic, but you are very confident Giannis finishes his career in Milwaukee. You are very confident. We were talking about Dirk. This was an un- it was always a beautiful segue that we would have had when we were talking about Dirk. Um, you are very confident Giannis finishes his career in Milwaukee. It's mm-hmm. a question. Or mm-mm. Grant. I don't think Giannis wants to leave. I think the Bucks will have to force him to leave. You know what I mean? Like when pe- when when people they get to age you know 40, 50, they've been with the same company for a while. Kids are in school, their company like they don't want to leave their job. They don't want to relocate. They don't want to do all that stuff. I don't think Giannis wants to leave. I think the Bucks will have to force him, right, by letting things get so bad to where he has no choice. And like, I, like 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 Dame in Portland. Yeah. Like they've been bad for too many years in a row and now he's getting antsy. Very, very confident is tough, but I, I'd i say it's as close to even money as, as you could be for a player sticking with a, a team for his whole career, which doesn't happen almost ever. Right. So I would, I'm very confident, strong, but I'll say a, a meek and mild, mm-hmm, actually. Pretty optimistic. Art Winkler. I would say that... Um... Do you know? Do you not know what Bucky's is? I do. Paul, uh, only loosely familiar. I've seen it. I'm just doing gas station humor. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, I'm. I'm real predictable, actually. I do the same shit all the time. Bless you. Very confident that Quick Trip will remain in Wisconsin and continue to block out multiple gas stations for the rest of Giannis's career. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know that I'm very confident. I think, um, I don't know. People are panicking about Giannis again, two and a half years. Can I say this instead? Mm -hmm. Uh, I hope he stays, but if he doesn't, fine. Hmm. If I would have come to you with even like the meekest suggestion of I want to be very clear. If you're John, let me ask you this question. Okay, I'm going to do it this way. If you're John Horst, are you sleeping easily at night without any concern you're going to wake up? I don't have any concern that Giannis is going anywhere, no matter what Winder says. Oh, no, no. Forget the Windhorst or whatever else. But, like, how how easily do you think if you're John Horst, you're sleeping with any concern that you're going to wake up to a Giannis text that says, I'm not, I'm not for this anymore? Like, is there None. you have zero concern about that if you're John Horst or you know whatever? I think there's two and a half years in his contract. And what do you say? What do you say? And a half. There's. I mean, it's two more seasons. I think what I meant. You're right. I don't know why I said that. Why did I say that? I don't what know. What fuck day do I think it is? You've March twice 8th, said two and a half years. Two and a half years left. Like what is that? I think I'm counting the player option as a half. Well, he will opt out of that option. Yeah. So there's two years left. Yeah, well, then maybe. I mean, I would not. I, I'll answer. Mm, I would not be sleeping like comfortably after what just happened. I absolutely must get the coaching hire right as John Horst, and even then, like what I do with Brooke and Middleton and Drew and the rest. Yeah, of the but roster, I think that John. Like, listen, back I would my be. I, I would thing. be sleeping on the edge of my seat. I, I'm not. But I'm he a was bit, so hyper. He did it. He got Giannis. Having Giannis sign this contract 
that he's in right now makes it more likely he'll sign the next one. Ooh, I, mm -mm, I don't like that take at all. I mean, I, I like that. I wish I was, I wish I agreed with it. I don't agree with it. I don't know how one, Well, like you said, he's here. He's familiar. And I do like what Sparky said yesterday on the show, uh, which if you haven't checked it out, you know where to find it. I, uh, he says like everything he thinks of now, he's thinking my day, my kids are going to see this someday. Sure. And so the decision about where to sign the next contract is going to be based on what's best for my kids. Sure. And how do I want my kids to view that? So I would think that that leads him to stay in Milwaukee. Also, he's got, you know, he, he's been here forever. Like Rogers didn't want to leave. If we're going to keep tossing these guys back and forth, but then eventually he was, he was not wanted. So now he wants to leave and he's going to be reinvigorated. I can't believe I have to waste, waste my Black Friday on that fucking game. Wait, what, what else are you going to do? Jets Dolphins is the Black Friday game. Everyone's coming over. We know this already. How did this happen? Because they're like trickling the announcements. Okay. Jaguars play back to back weeks in England, which is a super test drive for a hmm. NFL Europe division. My only question is, who are the Jaguars? I think I said it just fine. I just I'm I'm forever going to just do that to you, but yeah. Well, and then I'm gonna forever text Grant after these saying "fuck Paul." Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll say, "Oops, Bart, I think you put this into the group chat." So you seem like you're worried he's gonna leave. I, you know, no, no, hold on. I, I'm just telling you. Maybe this is more about my personality. I'm telling you, if Giannis, so if Giannis like wakes up and says, "I want out of here," that's gonna suck. But if the contract comes up. And Giannis decides, all right, Milwaukee, we had such a special time. I got you a title. I have new things I want to explore in this one life I have. What am I supposed to do about that? Well, that, wow. that, my question is that just how comfortably you're sleeping as the general manager, team president, whatever. So seems like because they won a championship, you are at ease regardless. Is that a fair? Okay, yes. And then to answer your question, I'm like – I don't know. I mean, I'm not that worried about it. <clears throat> so here's my thing. There's been no indication of anything that Giannis is going to want to be gone. No, right. I totally agreed. Windhorse stuff aside. Well, why my, should I my, worry my about thing it? Is like, I'm horsed. The Bucks over the next two years have, I, I don't think there's like a middle ground. To Horse that. will probably plan to do everything he can under the assumption that he's not guaranteed a future with Giannis. Which I don't like. I think he should look to expand the window uh, mm. and not like think like, okay, I have to do everything I can to maximize these next two years. Can they re-sign him now or is the NBA you got you? Got no, it? not yet. They I think they can do it next off season. They could do like an extension to his because of the player option and all that. They can't do anything about it right now. Um so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, again, this might be more about my personality, but I would be a little bit worried. And I know the one thing that Grant and I will since definitely disagree on, because, like, with Grant, you're always like, hey, let, let Corbin Burns play out the entirety of a contract. Then if he walks, he walks. Whereas me, with Burns and with Giannis, if I have a pretty strong idea that said superstar is not going to return, you have to you have to get stuff back, even if you don't get the full entire – like. So, Bart, your thing of like, hey, if he does the two more years and then he opts out and he says, hey, Milwaukee, it's been great, but I'm going to try something else. And the Bucks, in this horrendous hypothetical, get nothing back. You will suck for a decade. If you like if Giannis were to just leave one day as a free agent, you are fucked for a decade. You can't recover from that. You've traded all your future draft picks. You have nothing on your roster that's young. It would take an insurmountable amount of time for the Bucks to recover from that. So that's why John Horst for me, like if I'm is, is not sleeping very well, because I have a delicate dance that I have to go through right now. now John uh, Horst, he's going to have, if Giannis leaves, he's going to have less pressure to win than he does right now. He's going to be, he's going to be made in the shade. Oh, I couldn't disagree more as we get yeah. further from our 95% agreement rate. I think a lot of Bucks fans, you you the first year that Giannis is gone and the Bucks suck, you know how happy a lot of Bucks fans are gonna be that they can afford tickets again and that the Feister is gonna feel like the old Bradley Center. People are gonna be fucking over the moon to have a shitty team. 
See, but the good thing is, and you want to keep doing like the Rogers analogy comparison, they had a they had a new plan for the past three years. Like they've been preparing for the exit. If you're not prepared for the exit and then the exit comes unexpectedly, you did not do your job as the general manager, as the president of basketball operations. You, you know what I mean? Like that's why Gudikins deserves a ton of credit is like he kind of did like the Golden State Warriors thing. Like he had the varsity team and then he built the JV team. Which the, did not work. It did not work, but they also did not win championships in the meantime. They tried to build the varsity and the JV and they still won a title despite the JV team not panning out. So um, any other thoughts on Giannis? I didn't, I, I was, I didn't know where this would go. I'm surprised I have as strong of feelings as I do. I'm surprised my feelings aren't that strong. I mean, Giannis, I, Giannis is like the one connection that my kid, he knows Giannis. He, I can show him a picture of him, not even a basketball jersey, and he knows Giannis. And I don't want him to leave. I want Giannis to be here forever so that my kid can see how great he is. I just, for me, I mean, I, I just want Giannis to do what's best for Giannis. I hope that's Milwaukee. I uh I don't like Bart have strong thoughts on this, but Bart saying Jaguars uh did make me think of something else. Would we like to hear a, a thirty second clip from April second, twenty twenty one, from the archives, a la Cone Roller? Do you yeah. guys enjoy this? I have a clip. Horvat's talking, by the way. Horvat's trying to say something. Uh, maybe he wins five. Maybe he's Mahai. Oh, I got I'm distracted. Someone just DM'd me to tell me how to pronounce Jaguars. I don't care. I don't care. Jag- there's so much going on in the world. There's so much going on in the world. It is a struggle to get out of bed some days. <laughs> That's yeah. great. I mean, I'm right. <laughs> Especially in August of 2021, you were around. Yeah, you know, Jesus. Anyways, I don't. Right. I don't know. I I think Bart's brought up the honest stuff, and he said this before. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to pre-worry. For something that might happen, like if- yeah, Paul loves the pre word. No, no, I don't worry. I don't worry at all. I plan and prepare strategic for outlook. the absolute worst. God, that's such a you- Paul Emig fucking answer. That's Listen. yeah, that's such a Paul Emig answer. Why don't you go to the doctor and plan your Disney World trip, Paul? Like yeah. I, I just I don't know. I don't. Want you to- have like? Do you have like a like a tree Loki timeline branch? Like, I do. okay, we're going to on Monday we're gonna do this and we're going to Tuesday do this. But if it rains, then this will be the plan. And oh. then we'll make off from this. Oh, yes. Oh, my fuck. I just, I think some sports fans, and we talk to a lot of the callers and tweeters, it's like, they want to be like, I don't know, Giannis might want to leave. So in two years, if it happens, they can turn around and say, I knew it two years ago. I, to- I told you I said this. Yeah. I, just, I, don't, I don't care about that. I don't need I to be first. I don't yeah. need to predict things. And I, and I mean this very sincerely though I appreciate the mockery on my behalf because I'm a total weirdo. Oh, but like, love. if John Horst isn't doing those like alternate paths and what if X then do Y and if not Y then Z, if he's not doing that, it would be malpractice. He is, he, he is doing that. So for it's us, his to, job. so we have to acknowledge like as what I hope to be savvy NBA viewers as savvy NBA Bucks viewers, I think it's okay to acknowledge that, like, if the president of the team, regardless of how comfortable he's sleeping at night knowing about Giannis's future, he's doing that. So mm-hmm. why wouldn't we feel comfortable to at least discuss, you know, that that scenario? I gotcha. um, which which is a tricky line because it's more about like hot takes and it's more about like like oh I, well, I'm going to be first to worry and like that's not that's not what I'm doing or at least that's not what I'm intending to do. It's more just about like hey, if the executives of the team are doing this we should probably acknowledge it too. Like, otherwise we're just being ignorant of the possibilities. Well, that's, right. why, that's why people call you preparation, Paul. That's do, the, do you that. are. That's what P, I've heard people call you. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah, uh, double P. I think yeah. I feel, uh, I, I think I take that as a compliment. Preparation I, got, I got two uh, things I want to ask or say one's about sports. One's not. Okay. So my kid says fuck a lot. Oh no. But he doesn't say it outside of me and him because he knows only to say it when it's us, just us two nasty guys. And you know that your wife can hear you upstairs right now, right? Well, he says all the time. Oh, I thought you said just in front of you, but in front of her as well? Okay. Well, yeah, but really, it's got to be us two nasty guys. <laughs> just locker room talk. Oh, boy, I knew that's what you were going to say. Go ahead. Ba- basement, basement talk. That's what it is, really. Uh, this is from Woj as we're recording. 
15-year NBA veteran and ESPN analyst J.J. Redick has interviewed for the Toronto Raptors job. Wow, interesting. Oh, those two things aren't connected. I was waiting for you to... No, they're not. Those two separate things. Okay. Yeah, they're two separate things. J.J. Redick is is a very analyst. No one believes that more than J.J. Redick. And I like J.J. Redick, but I don't like when he's like, first take is the is the toxin of our sports society. And then he's on it three days a week. It's yes. Like, and I also, if we're talking about backlash on people, McAfee needs to cool the fuck down with his Aaron Rodgers defense. I have, I have, I have tuned him out. I haven't seen it. I blocked. I yeah. I'm, I'm off that corner of the internet. Yeah. He blocked you. He blocked me. He oh, did. Cause yeah. Cause you were doing those memes. Yeah. It's just oh, that's right. He did block you. It's just Brewers tweets. But then, Matt, because I saw McAfee and Rappaport was hosting, and <clears throat> McAfee, there was a report that he's going to be on ESPN now. And then he was doing something like, people are saying something, so, you know, he, 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 it's something. Da, da, and then all of his buddies are like, what? Da, 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 and it's like, all right, McAfee, we all know you're fucking going to ESPN. Stop pretending like you're not. Why is I'm, he, by the way, I'm just surprised yeah, that, he can make a, he has a $30 million a year contract. Doesn't he? He can't get that like at a ESPN. That would, that's how is that? I don't know. I don't know. Something about he want. I think he wants people to fill in for him when he's not there or something. I guess he does have a kid now. So maybe that's hey, you know, a group your of life. like eight guys. Can none of them fill in? The, Rappaport's been guest hosting. It's been funny. I like Rappaport. I, this is just a belief I have. If you're going to be one of the stooges, mm-hmm. and I say stooges respectfully, if you're going to be one of the stooges on the show, a Danette, or if you're going to be one of uh, McAfee's choir boys, at any moment, you should be able to fill in and at least do an hour. Like, otherwise, what, what are, you, are you there for sound effects? You're there to like... To well, do, that's do, how do I do thought Horvat and Toby were, but Tim Shea can't talk his way out of a traffic stop. And I love Tim, but Tim works in TV now. Like Tim was never trying to be <laughs> like, he was never trying to be statewide big unit, Bill Michaels. He would, he was a producer. Okay. He didn't even want to be there. I know. Well, yeah, I think, I think Tim's catchphrase on your podcast is I have nothing on that. <laughs> oh, uh, great. <laughs> Tremendous. Thanks Tim. All right. Um, you, did you do your two things? Was the one the Woj thing and the other like the, your kid saying f bombs thing? I thought it was going to be like that would be two of them. Yeah, that was the JJ okay. Reddick swears a lot. But oh, I did want to say that tomorrow we'll have some more voicemails. Um, thanks to Carl's place, Carl of et.com backslash Bart mm-hmm. golf simulators galore. We will also talk mm-hmm. Packers schedule. Um, so I'm going to tape that late at night if any of you two knuckle dicks want to join me. Otherwise, I can do it by my lone night, Thursday, Thursday night. After the schedule comes out. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, tonight. I I responded to a tweet six years ago. I can't get fucking bogged down (laughs) in what day it is currently right now. Also, uh, have you ever talked to... Who the fuck am I having on this week? I hope it's someone I know. Come on. Some PFF guy. Renner? No, he he left. Gail? Oh, yeah, he did. Gail left, too. George Brad. Oh, Spielberger? Yeah. You used to have him on the radio show, didn't you? I never had Spielberger on. I had no. Brad, I had Bruce Gradkowski on before he went into the coach. I, I, I might have told you about this. I had I had Renner on once upon a time on my show. Worst interview I've ever done. I mm. I oh, I that's just a good one. worst interview I ever done was with Matt LaPay. Oh, what because you were because you were you were just too nervous though. I did it when I was in Fondy. He had a book out, and I was just like telling him that I like to listen to him when I rake leaves. I never rake leaves, but that's like a rake leaves kind of guy. <laughs> he's a rake leaves i had i had run around tried to hit jokes all of them missed right it was terrible so like two years later i tried again and i'm like i'm going to prepare my skull off for this interview like i'm going to i'm going to nail this interview to the cross and an hour before pff's booking guy texted me and said runner's busy but we can give you spielberger and spielberger's like a contract guy like really good contract guy so i'm scrambling i was trying to find con preparing for a contract talk is tough you need to. You I don't know to, anything about him, so that's good for me because I write down the facts and the figures and the way that contract. Like he's he's unbelievable. When I that. ask him, like, who's going to win the NFC North? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. But like okay. the thing with who, all who, those has, who has the guys cleanest for, cap sheet moving forward? Yeah, like that's the thing with all those PFF guys is they have like just their wheelhouse and it, like I I would always try to like okay what can I like what's the best thing to ask him? 
But then they they pull the rug out from you an hour before the interview. No, you now you need to talk to this lawyer about contracts. No. You don't have to, but is he a lawyer? Spiel. Yeah, I yeah. believe he has Esquire in his bio. By the way, Bodie is uh I believe Bodie passed the bar, so it's Bodie Esquire as well, which is probably why he behaves the way he does on Twitter. And I love Bodie. Bodie's a big deadhead. We have a lot of common ground, Bodie and I. I have two more topics. You want me to get to them? Yeah, I mean, I just got to talk to Brad Spielberger coming up. Otherwise, my day is pretty free. <laughs> Depends on how many Marvel episodes are in the in the hopper. I'm watching the Defenders right now, where Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Danny Rand, and Matt Murdock all team up. <clears throat> Matt Murdock is that a sibling of um, what's his name, Lucius? No, the uh, what the fuck's his name? The oldest kid, Lachlan. Lachlan. That's it. Lachlan. Oh yeah, Murdock. Yeah. No relation. Uh, is pound for pound Matt LaPay better than Bob Euchre? Questions? No. Well, n- not now maybe. LaPay. Go ahead. That's LaPay. a topic for another day. LaPay's pretty damn good. All well, right. There if he doesn't like me. I want to be realistic about Chris Middleton sign and trade possibilities. Grant, are you pacing? Yeah. And thank God you want it. Someone has to be realistic about Chris Middleton sign and trade. So w- w- what I want to put it in is like, I'm going to give you four that I found on the internet. These are not mine, but I just wanted to see like what type of blogosphere folks are like, who are trying to get Chris Middleton. There's a Knicks guy who's trying to get him. There's a, a, a Rockets guy trying to get him. There's a Pacers guy trying to get Chris Middleton. So I just want to see what like they would value Middleton for. Right. And then what I want mm-hmm. us from a Bucks perspective to do is say, yeah, or. Mm-hmm. All right. So like, then I need to go into this thinking you are breaking the news to me. Yes. So. For those, this is not real news, but I need to get into a frame of mind. So you're right. So you present it as, hey, I got to stop. This just happened. Yes. Can I be the producer? Uh, Paul, we have breaking news. Breaking news brought to you by the BetQL network. Be smarter and beat the books. Download the BetQL app today. All right. What do we have? All right. And Grant, uh, thank you for doing such a good job with production. I do want your opinion, too, on this. Uh, Bart Mm -hmm. and Grant, we're just in the New York Knicks have acquired Chris Middleton in a sign and trade with the Milwaukee Whoa. Bucks. The Bucks have received Mitchell Robinson, Derek Rose, and the Knicks 2025 first round pick. What are your thoughts? Mm-hmm or mm-mm, this is a good Bucks trade. What pick again? 2025 Knicks first rounder. You, no, my face froze. I like Mitchell Robinson, younger, someone to if Brooke is here in the next year or two, someone who can Rose is on the books for 15 million to do nothing. Rose is nothing. Rose is as Zach Lowe once was a throw in. Can we get someone not named Derek? Can we get someone else? Yeah, they, they were willing. Uh, like it looks like in this report, <laughs> um, they were willing to negotiate like maybe like Obi Toppin instead. <laughs> Why don't I? Sorry, I'm going to have Mitchell Robinson and diet Mitchell Robinson. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to get younger with this deal. I don't want Derrick Rose. That would yeah. Be- um, it sounds it sounds like um, you mean you mean they didn't they they did us a favor by not including Evan Fournier. All right, so I do have I have more. I don't want to say too much because there's other deals in the pipeline here. So um, you're excited about this trade? No. It, it would seem like a very we're just trying to get rid of him. Okay, and this is the best we can. Yeah, so, if you're so, going to so, trade with the Knicks, I'm going to need Josh Hart back. Okay, so so in this case, keep Chris Middleton, right? I would, yeah. I would prefer Chris All right. and see what else. Yeah. Came so the, by the way, what I want to present is the alternative to this is the Bucks have re-signed Chris Middleton to a four-year, $195 million deal. So, I, I, or there's three paths. One, the trade that I'm presenting you. Two, the Bucks have re-signed him for four and 195. Three, the Bucks let him walk for nothing. So I like, would take the new contract of right. all those things. All right. Uh, breaking news. Grant, I don't know. Did you see, did you see this uh, just come across? Do you want me to do the read again? No, that's okay. That's oh, okay. okay. Um, no, we have a new sponsor. Who is it? Breaking news is brought to you by Bucky's Gas Stations. <laughs> Breaking news, guys. Check this out. I don't want to belabor this point. This is a big NBA trade that just came across. The Knicks. Breaking news is brought to you by Iron Jock. The requirement is if they give you a free sweatshirt, you have to wear it in every single piece of everything you ever fucking do. <laughs> I, I saw that. a commercial where uh, Wildy and Tauscher were singing backup with Gina Della, and uh, Wildy was wearing an Iron Jack shirt. Also, Gina Della is a window salesperson, not a fucking celebrity. Go ahead. 
not breaking news sponsored by Pella Windows and Doors. Uh, they won't fuck you over like Windows Select did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This news just came across the uh, NBA trade wire. The Knicks oh my received God. Chris Middleton. Okay. Wow, they did? They did. They, they gave fuck him a, we get? They, the, the Bucks have received the 2026 and 2028 Knicks first round picks. 2026 and 2028, along with Obi Toppin, Evan Fournier, and Derek Rose. So I think the highlight here, guys, is, is the picks and maybe Obi Toppin. And then you have to have some salary filler with Fournier and Rose. I think well, we that's get first round picks filler. after Giannis leaves. Fucking cool. They got two future firsts. Uh, and and Obi Toppin, and then some salary fill. This was a good deal for the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. three three years in the future is too far for me to get excited mm-hmm. about a first round pick. For, One, for- I may be dead. Two, robots may inherit the earth. Three, COVID twenty five may have shut down the season. We don't fucking know. Two things. No, I'd rather have Middleton at the New Deal. And two, mm-hmm. why do Knicks fans want Chris Middleton? Chris Middleton is not what they. He's not a respectfully he can't be a Tibbs guy he's he 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 took until April to get into shape and Tibbs is supposed to run these guys in hard defense and, and the Knicks want it more seemingly than other teams except for in this series Chris Middleton is I've never described Chris Middleton as a guy who's he's not a heat culture guy he's not a Tibbs guy this is not a good fit for the Knicks yeah they're they're really trying to get him uh these Knicks bloggers so okay. by the way I just want to say I'll answer both of these two Knicks proposals as mm-mm, no um, re-sign Middleton. You can do better down the road with, you know, with a West, you know, like even if he becomes a Russell Westbrook sized salary cap disaster. Well, I'll take Russ. No. Yeah. Um, so, so both those deals are bad. I, I, I'm, I, I agree with, with you on that. So mm-mm to both of those. However, this just in the Pacers have traded for Chris Middleton. Wow. The Bucks get back two first round picks. They're still negotiating the years on these. Okay. Buddy Heald, Daniel Tice, and Aaron Neesmith. Two first-round picks, Buddy Heald, Daniel Tice, and Aaron Neesmith to the Bucks for Middleton. You guys well, like this Heald, deal? Before mm-hmm. anyone gets mm-hmm. too excited, Heald's going to be 32 and is an unrestricted free agent, so he's got one year left on his deal. Uh, Neesmith, and who's the other? You know how bad Bucks fans are down mm-hmm. right now? I saw a tweet yesterday that says, holy fuck. I forgot all about Hugo Basson. We need all the shooters we can get. Okay. I, I got excited pass. about it. Hugo, I, Hugo Basson can wait. Middleton just got traded to the Pacers. Oh. Um, uh, for what again? So uh, no. actually, it turns no. out it's actually the Pacers' first round pick this year, which is in the late lottery. Nah, pass. Grant? What does Giannis want? He wants to win. Okay. That's not, no, I'm not, I'm not accepting that answer from Giannis. I, I'm not, no, 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 no. Would you, how badly do you want back Chris Middleton after what happened this I, last? I won't, I won't leave or stay as a result of this trade. I, Giannis, this, this trade doesn't influence me staying long-term one way or the other. I'd just take Chris Middleton back. Over me now. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to. Just... All right. The fourth and final one, the Houston Rockets have a bunch of cap space. Mm-hmm. They do not need to take back, like, so the Bucks with the Fournier and Rose thing, that's salary fill because those teams are over the cap. Same thing with guys like Tice and the Pacers being over the cap. Uh, I have a fourth and final. This trade just came in. What? The Houston Rockets, with cap space, have just traded for Chris Middleton in the sign and trade with the Bucks. The Bucks got back Jalen Green. The Bucs didn't have to take as much salary back because the Rockets had space to take Middleton in. The Bucs get 21-year-old former number two overall pick from two years ago, Jalen Green. This is a good trade for the Bucs. Mm-hmm or mm-mm. Mm. Sure. Can I just say, the Houston Rockets... <laughs> I absolutely of, love this experiment. This is fun for me. As a fan of the league, Paul, the Houston Rockets, if they were to bring in some combination of James Harden, Jalen Brown, and Chris Middleton to go around what they have, Ime Udoka as coach, Rockets yeah. would be pretty fucking sick. That'd be a cool team. I'd watch yeah. that team. Mm-hmm. I don't know. How out are we on Jalen Green? I, I'm not going to – I'm, I'm not out. Of them. I'm not out. 
He's been pretty disastrously bad for two years, but he's there a 20, that. yeah. But he's a twenty-one-year-old super like always was a top all, uh, McDonald's All-American type guy, top of his class. Uh, he's in a terrible situation with a coach that just got fired. I the, the results have been bad for Jalen Green, but I am definitely definitely not out on the future of Jalen Green. Can I get a pick too? Maybe one pick. Um, Something. yeah. Twenty. How long is Twitter gonna say from Earth when I tweet? I don't get why that's a thing. Elon, because he's going to tweet from Mars and be like, duh. Also, is this Tucker, is Tucker moving to Twitter a, a bigger thing for the landscape of the way Twitter works and his finance than most of us like to admit? I feel like, like oh, he's doing Twitter spaces, which is fine. I love Twitter spaces, but I, I don't know. No, but he's doing things. video, right? Different pot, different pot. I don't he's know. He's not just doing Twitter spaces. Well, I know, but his show is going to live exclusively on Twitter. Yeah, but like, how's my grandma going to watch it? I don't know. Good question. My grandma, she can turn off her TV. Three weeks later, there'll still be the Fox News logo burned in the retina of the screen. That's why they got to make it move. How is she going to watch Tucker? Sign her up for Twitter. My grandma, this is a a pretty strange conversation considering this mega NBA trade that just happened. I look if Giannis does not pound the table and say, I want Chris Middleton or else, (laughs) that's something you'd have to look into. Right? So this is your favorite one, though. Both. Oh, of you guys. yeah. This is the awesome. best one by by three shakes of a Tucker Carlson. I you can, you can swing a dead cat around the NBA and and find yourself a Neesmith, Daniel Tice trade. I if yeah. I'm if I'm going for it, I'm trading Middleton. I yeah. I need to think that there might be a there, there might be a boom potential. It could be a bust yeah. potential. If I'm, Obi Toppin got hurt before Game Five, I just go down to the New York Y and throw a Toppin jersey on a guy and be like, Hey, you're Obi Toppin now. Come on. Yeah, I would 100 percent. And I you guys like when I test these out on people, <laughs> I did not get a favorable response to this trade for my uh, my buddies. But are they casuals league? or do they know ball? Oh, hardcore b- basketball guys. Yeah, interesting. Big NBA guys. Um, I would do this for the Bucs. This is the only one that I would do. Right. I think Jalen Green in the right system would be electric in a system. Well, what better system to come to than here where we have no system? <laughs> The, yeah, system the system is, is what you make it, Bart. Yeah, the yeah. system is what – the system comes from within. Look, the system is the system, okay? It is yeah. – So uh, Are the Bucks in a rebuild, or are we revamping, or are we reloading, or are we recuperating? Reloading, retooling. retooling. I, I think that whole debate is absolutely ridiculous. We are know. regurgitating bad ideas. We are. Um, so I want to say this about that real quick. Oh, jeez. Andy Herman and Peter Bukowski earlier in the week started talking about, are we in a rebuild or not? And Peter's doing videos on it and, and that, and, and this is great content. And, and, you know, both of these guys are friends of show and that's terrific. And then Packer fans talk about it. They have big followings. Let, let's discuss it. Totally fine. Uh, Matt Schneidman, Schneidman writes an article about it. Do your own damn work, Schneidman, you fuck. What do you mean? Like, you're the like, you're the you're the beat right. You're supposed to be telling us shit, not what us dummies are talking about. Uh, Guy flies in New York so he can ask Aaron. Hey, I'm here. Fuck you. You flew to just do Gelb show. Yeah, but Gelb that's different. Gelb Force One. <laughs> Gelb Force One. So do you know uh, people thought people because I go to Snapchat now and there's Snap Maps and like I just take a picture that a tourist did and then I crop it and then I tweet it <laughs> so it looks like I'm there. All right, um, I have one last topic, and it's uh, so. Anyway, I just you do one more because then I have to talk to uh, Brad Spielman. Yeah. So all I wanted to say with the Middleton trades was to give who is it other was to give an Spielberg. idea from, from Sorry, other Paul. NBA fan bases who are trying to get Chris Middleton and what they're giving up. And I think for the most part they're giving up total shit. Yeah, except I'd really do like the Rockets idea. So other teams want Middleton. Anything. Other teams want Middleton, but they're really not willing to give up much. At least in you know in these examples, I mean, they shouldn't be. What did what what did the what did the Pelicans give up for CJ McCollum? Uh, I don't. Uh, it was uh, it was. A, I mean, there. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but like the idea was that they gave up a lot. Like the context was, well, that's a lot for CJ McCollum. Like. Um, anyway, I want to ask one NFL question, and then you can talk to Brad Spielberger. He's from Chicago, by the way. Little from Chicago. 
little intel. He's a Bears fan. Oh, cancel it, Bart. Mm-hmm. Cancel. I guess Portland traded, gave up Josh Hart, young prospects, and three future draft picks. Oh, they gave up Tony Snell. Tony Snell was in Tony the season. Tony Snell, contract throw in Tony Snell. Thomas Zatarain. You know that Chicago oh, comes from the name Chicago, which means striped skunk? I did know that, yeah. I I didn't. I, I is that I don't think he's telling the truth, but I mean, oh. I, I, it's hard to tell. Chicago, yeah, that striped striped skunk or onion. Uh, early explorers of the Great Lakes realized there were a lot of wild onions growing in that area. That's that's what the movie Holes is based on, I believe. That actually that starts to make sense now. The wild onions. Okay, Paul, you had one more. You said one more, and this might lead nicely into your Thursday night show. Okay. The NFL schedule release. Is a big deal. It's an important thing to talk about. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm, or mm mm. Mm hmm. And and I'll go first, Bart, and then and then I'll let you cook, unless you really wanted to jump in here. Um, no, mine's sizzling. I, okay, sizzle. I can't wait to talk about this on my show tonight because we're gonna go through the schedule. We're not gonna win loss it, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna point out which games are what games because we are you gonna you're not gonna know the full thing by your show. Shut You'll up. Know I don't, it's some, at some point, at some point on my show. I'm going to go through and I'll be like, okay, this is the beautiful Saturday afternoon game where it's sunny. This is uh, the game we're going to listen to while we're raking our backyard. This is the one we'll listen to in our deer stand. This is you totally. Yeah. And then I know my aunt and uncle and my mom and dad, they want to go to Vegas as a foursome to go watch the, they've never been to Vegas. They want to go see the Packers. So this stuff matters. I don't want to win loss. And I want to talk about like the fun stuff like, like that. Oh, Bart, the NFL schedule release is a big deal, a big topic. It's important. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's not. I like. What if you weren't in the business of content generation? Like, does it change your opinion at all? I mean, it dictates what you're gonna be doing for 17 Sundays, or Thursdays, or Fridays, or Saturdays, or Mondays. Yeah, and for me, I want to go to either Pittsburgh, Vegas, or Denver, and I'll organize a trip. Now, I do have some weekend conflicts coming up with my PA job. So will my friends be like, hey, we want to go to Vegas? I'll be like, actually, I can't that day. Forward Madison is hosting Union Omaha. And I need to do reads for Madison Gas and Electric. So I am, it is a big deal. Also, but, you know, I was talking to to reference Sparky again. He's like, it's a big deal because if the schedule's hard for Jordan Love, that's going to, I don't give a shit about that. Mm-hmm. I I just remember that one year the, the Packers really did get screwed when they had four out of five on the road. Yeah. You're ridiculous for calling me ridiculous. Well, the season. Got off. The, I'm so glad you played. That was one of them. I rem, such a great clip. Like they had what was it four four in a row or four or five to open the season at home? But that's when your legs are fresh. Like any any team can play on the road for the first couple of weeks. Middle of the season is ridiculous. I'll tell you as a former beat writer. I was always a little bit confused about like the big dealness of the schedule release and the NFL in those seven years since I've left has only made it like more of a deal. Like with the, I've always, so like, I think when I'm appreciating more and more as I get further removed from beat writer land is the number of people who are making scheduling decisions for their lives five to nine months in advance and so um, I wanted to I wanted to book Lambeau Field for a wedding on Tuesday, New Year's Eve. And we couldn't book it until the schedule came out. And I said, there's no way they're going to play on a Tuesday fucking night on New Year's Eve. And she said, we can't do anything until the schedule's out. So if that's like if that's that, you know, people you you can't. God, you can't book weddings when sports could even be in contention. So I think the schedule release is uh, it's more of a Green Bay thing. It's a chance for the people. Oh, who live- no, no. Would you wait? Would you wait to see where I'm going? This is how I see it. The people who live, at least in our state, the people who live in Green Bay and have season tickets love getting to chime in on schedule release day. They'll be like, oh, noon start time. I'm going to have to get up early or oh, oh, 3.15, oh, Krolls is really going to be fucking, like, I don't know. That's always the vibe that I get. It's people in Green Bay and who have season tickets who like talking about these specific things of actually going to games, whereas, you know, the majority of the people in the state aren't actively there. Oh, I don't know if Bart just left us or not, but 
turned off his camera. Yeah. I didn't know you were on the beat, Paul. Really? Well, I mean, the media starts with me. So I, and there is an I in media, but I didn't know that you, yes, you were with Fox Sports. I'm messing with you. Oh, I didn't know if you were serious or not. Yeah. You no, know, I, I, I remember. I remember your hits with Radio Joe and Bill. I used to listen in high school. It was very. Yeah, but that was, yeah, that was, you know, that was like side work. People got mad at Paul for that. What do Doing, you mean? What, why did they get mad? Other beat writers were mad at Paul. Oh. For what? I'm trying to even honestly remember. That you would come on. That's why they had to change you from insider to analyst. Oh, that's right. Because they're like, Paul's not even fucking here anymore. That was later, though. That was post-2016. I would still... So, what? Well, yeah. This is super duper. It would drive me nuts when Eric Baranchik would come on. Because he was just some guy that paid to go to the games and watch the games. I always thought that was a bit odd. Um, He's like, yeah, 87 had a good route. Then 53 had a great tackle. Say their fucking name, Eric. Yeah. From 2011 until 2016, I was there every day. Well, Um, I guess we follow each other. I should not be so mean. (laughs) Call him a hack. Yeah, it's six years. You guys will have it out. The guy never responded to me. That's all I had prepared today. That was killer. Yeah, killer episode. Preparation Paul comes through again. What was the highlight of this episode, do you think? Does anyone have a moment? That I don't was... know if I have a moment to clip, other than I, I just took my shirt off and nobody fucking noticed it. You, you had your camera off. What did you want me to say? I thought Paul, I, Paul's this senior senior member of this group. I was waiting for him to react, and I was going to play off of him. Did I not see this? I or... took my camera off, had my shirt off, put my camera back off. To, it was just sort of like a split second. Yeah, that's not clippable. I like... For me, the standout is uh, the reactions to the Middleton trades. Yeah, but then I went on some weird tangent about Gina Della. I was going to say, I know one part that you cannot clip, and that is that part. Please don't clip that. I just, she's all over the fucking place. That's not sure. She's off. Aren't you? You're all over the place. We all are. We're promoting our stuff. Yeah, but I just question, like, does she want to give me better windows or does she want to be a celebrity? She wants to give you, they have very good windows. The best windows. But like Gruber, it's just, you know, Gruber's, she wants to be what Gruber is, but Gruber's already that. I see. Like if I start going to the Bucks games and dyeing my hair green and doing a wave, like that's already Dr. Dave. You can't be that guy. There's lots of commercials on TV. There's multiple people are allowed to be in commercials. Yeah, but there's one inherent Milwaukee celebrity person based on their ads alone. I didn't even know she was from Milwaukee. She could have been from Madison, Eau Claire. If she was from Lacrosse, I'd know. But I didn't. I didn't know she was from Milwaukee. I, th- I think you're. I think you're grasping at straws here. Aren't I always? Yeah. Your moments. All right. Uh, formal invite to Jason Wildy to come on the pod so we can shit on Greg together. Maybe that's what I'll clip. I'll clip that. I'd rather you just did a sports thing. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I'll clip nothing. Well, just take a screenshot. There you go. Of us do like it looks like we're saying something insane, but really it's just us posing at the end of the episode, and then they get here and they they realize. Like okay. like when the Schefter when Schefter broke the news of the Rogers trade. Everybody, everybody, do something right now. Hold on. Shift command four. Got it. There you go. So if people want to know why we're making these faces, they have to listen. And it'll take them an hour and 28 minutes to figure out what it is. I got to go. Wait, wait, wait. Do you have one minute? Quickly. Okay. The episode is over. Goodbye. All right, this is for the YouTube. I'll be so quick. Very fast. Insanely, like the speed I'm going at is unparalleled. (sighs) To anything, imagine. 
Is that good? There you go. <laughs> That's it. You could have just seen that tomorrow. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right. See ya. See you, Paul. Bye. Bye. Mm. Have a lovely day, Bart. Uh, I need to. We have a workshop on learning the new media touch. I'm yeah. still airing this. It'll be on YouTube. Well, I, I, well, I got to go to work, and we have oh. a workshop at one. Okay. You know, like an in-service type of thing. Did you take notes? No, I already use it. It's mostly for everyone. Yeah, but I've noticed that if you go to a meeting without notes, people are going to be like real judgy if you don't bring a notebook. I can bring a notebook. I'll bring a legal. You don't even have to draw. You don't have to write anything in it. Well, I'm going to write something. I'll write something. I write just just to write. Write one of those S's. All right, thanks, buddy. Have a lovely day. Bye. This episode brought to you by Pella Windows and Doors. Gina Della, remember Pella.